Dave Soriano, chemistry professor with the University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in Bradford, Pennsylvania, USA. This short uh, introduction to first generation feedstocks for production of biofuels is from a course I teach, Introduction to Biofuels. Perhaps you'll find something here of uh, interest to you. First generation feedstocks, sugar beets, sweet sorghum, starch crops. An important source of sugar in Europe and a valuable feedstock for biofuels in France would be the sugar beets. Europe is the principal producer. Germany with 53 tons of sugar beets produced per hectare. A hectare is about two and a half acres. The Netherlands, 58 tons per hectare. Ukraine and Russia have the largest cultivated area, but the largest producers by volume are found in France and Germany. Worldwide, the total area cultivated in sugar beets is decreasing by 3.5% annually. Ukraine, the sugar beets are shrinking by 7.4% annually. Russia, shrinkage is 3.3% annually. The, my data is from about 2006, and uh, I'm recording this on January 20, 20th of 2012. France's sugar beet yield per hectare is the highest in the European Union. Sugar beet yields generally good yield, uh, generate good yields in many temperate climates, but compared to sugarcane, more energy is needed to uh, produce, and uh, it's chemically more intensive. There are concerns about the potential survival of pests in the soil, so cultivation in the same field is only once every three years. The yields strongly depend upon climatic conditions. The plant root must be processed to obtain the sugar and therefore more labor intensive and costly than sugar cane which you would find for example in Brazil. Since beets are more expensive as a feedstock, economic sustainability is often dependent upon government protection. Tariffs are in place on imported sugar. Many farmers are considering switching to wheat or rapeseed. Sweet sorghum. Not currently a significant ethanol feedstock, but it does deserve attention as a multi-use crop. Farmers, farmers can harvest the seeds at the top of the plant for food and the sugar in the stalks for fuels. In settings where land is scarce, the co-harvest of sorghum may be particularly efficient. Here in the United States, I'm in northwestern Pennsylvania, about 80 miles south of uh, Lake Erie, Buffalo, New York. It was always believed that sweet sorghum could not survive the winters north of our Route 80, which runs r essentially right through uh, the center of Pennsylvania. But apparently, in the last few years, the sweet sorghum has been holding up to our winters, which have been relatively mild now for the last 10 or 12 years compared to, let's say, 30, 40 years ago. The plant grows well in drier, warmer climates. It can also grow in temperate climates. It is drought tolerant and uh, shows to be strongly considered for ethanol production. It should not be discounted. Starch crops. Corn is the second largest source of biofuel today, primarily due to the dominance in the United States in uh, produ ethanol production, production from corn. Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Nebraska are the leading states here in the USA. A much smaller amount of ethanol is produced from corn in the northeastern part of China and in South Africa. In the United States, 98% of the corn crop is treated with synthetic nitrogen fertilizers and 97% of the corn fields are herbicide treated. Ethanol from grain starches is more land intensive than producing it from sugar cane because of lower fuel yields per hectare. Although the U.S. and Brazil produce comparable amounts of ethanol, the United States is using two times as much land to do it. Also, the cornstarch must undergo additional processing in order to convert it to ethanol. The advantage, much longer shelf life, sugar cane must be processed, you see, in 24 to 48 hours from the day of harvest. Wheat. The global volume of ethanol from wheat is considerably less than sugar cane or corn. In the United States, less than 3% of ethanol is derived from wheat. Canada and France are also small producers. As with corn, only the kernel, there, that's where the starch is, is used to produce ethanol. 
Overall, the yield of ethanol per hectare from wheat is less than that of corn. Wheat is an important food source, too. Most of the global production of wheat is consumed as food. The total cultivated land area is increasing only slightly, showing only 0.03% annual growth rate over the last 10 years. Wheat yields per hectare vary considerably depending on weather and climate conditions. Two wheat relatives, barley and rye, have also been used for ethanol production. As crops, they can resist drier and colder, cooler weather conditions, and they can grow in a more acidic soil. As feedstocks for ethanol, they are significant only in the northern part of Europe. Rye, as food or fuel source, has declined in recent years. Cassava, what we call here in the United States tapioca, it is the most cultivated crop in sub-Saharan Africa. It is second overall in all of Africa, fourth in southeastern Asia as an important crop, fifth in Latin America, and seventh in Asia. 60% of global production is in Africa, but the highest yields are in Asia due to less pests and intense crop management using fertilizers and irrigation. Cassava has high tolerance to poor soils and can be grown in drought areas. Thank you for listening to this short lecture, First Generation Feedstocks.